Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, again with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about a slide board transfer. So specifically today I'm going to be going over the slide board transfer that consists of going from the wheelchair to a bed and then back to the wheelchair again. I'm going to go over some of the specifics about why you would use a slide board, how to pick a slide board, also up front so that you have some of that information moving forward. This is the beginning of a slide board series where I'm going to go over how to do slide board transfers in a lot of different situations, but I thought we'd start here today. So let's just start with what I have. I have a standard wheelchair, which may be something that somebody is using um, long term if they have a long term condition that requires them to be in a wheelchair and perhaps unable to bear weight consistently through their lower legs um, or it may be something that is used in a recovery process perhaps following a multiple trauma pelvic fractures things like that that require you to recover in mostly a seated situation for an extended period of time so this wheelchair is a very standard model what you would frequently see as something that people would go home with in those situations. Um, it often doesn't come with a seat cushion. I've added a seat cushion here and I strongly encourage anybody who is going to be using a wheelchair and especially if they're going to be using a wheelchair and a slide board for transfers, you're going to need a cushion. That cushion gives you a little bit of extra height. It also helps to flatten the surface because when you slide board transfer, Flat surfaces are going to be the absolute easiest to transfer from. And a traditional wheelchair, if you don't have a cushion on it, has an arched sling like this. And so the slide board tends to be tippy. So I put an extra cushion on mine. I would encourage you to do the same if you're using a wheelchair uh, for slide board transfers. So oftentimes if you're doing a slide board transfer, you're not alone. So you might have a caregiver with you or uh, you might have a family member helping you out during your recovery process. In this situation, I'm gonna demonstrate it independently, but I'll talk you through how a caregiver would also be involved in the process. So let's show you the, gra or the slide boards I have here for us today. I have two, they're of the same style. These are a 440 pound weight capacity. This is the longer version. And then I have a shorter version as well, so you can see the uh, length difference. The longer ones are traditionally used for things like car transfers where the wheelchair can't get quite close enough to the seats. Um, they're also commonly used for uh, bed transfers if the bed is quite high. Now this is another caveat to this. If your bed that you're going to be transferring onto, and you know this ahead of time, is an extremely high bed, perhaps an extra pillow top or stacked on top of a tall bed frame, you might not be able to do a slide board transfer in and out of bed safely because the height difference is going to be so significant that without an extreme amount of upper body strength or a very strong caregiver, that transfer is going to be dangerous and difficult to accomplish. So I strongly recommend that before people return home to their bed, that they know the height difference between the wheelchair that they're gonna be transferring to and the bed height. So the bed that I'm gonna be transferring to today is a simple mattress on box spring on a traditional um, bed uh, setup. So it's not particularly tall, but it is slightly taller than my wheelchair height. The best case scenario is that you have a bed with adjustable height. So if you're somebody who's going to be either relying on a slide board for a long time, if not forever, or somebody who perhaps has a lot of weakness in addition to their injuries that they're recovering from, a hospital bed or similar that allows for vertical height changes is going to be remarkably easier for completing this transfer safely. So that's just my little soapbox moment that if you can address your bed height before attempting this type of transfer, life will be so much easier. So I'm gonna show you on a standard bed and I'm, I'm going to say I have the full use of my body. So I'm going to try very hard to highlight the areas that might be of a challenge for somebody who maybe doesn't have the full function of their body, but know that this is a tricky transfer that requires a lot of training and practice under the guidance of a healthcare provider. So please always make sure that you're asking and using a good therapy team, healthcare provider to complete these transfers initially because there is a bit of a learning curve. So let's get started with the wheelchair setup. The first things first, I have to get my leg rests, which down here, most of the leg rests you'll see have a swing away technique. So there's a little silver piece here that you're going to press on and that allows the leg rest to then swing out of the way. So what I often tell people to do is place their foot on the leg rest away from the bed and then you're going to flip this foot rest up out of the way and swing it back. That's step one, you have to get the leg rest out of the way. So make sure your uh, wheels are unlocked. 
Now we're going to approach the bed. The goal angle that you're looking for here is about 45 degrees, so between the bed and the wheelchair. So I'm going to turn myself slightly here, and I'm going to seek a 45 degree angle. And you may notice I'm really going to get myself as close to the edge of the bed as I can. If you need to get even closer, these leg rests come off completely. And that is an option as well. You would simply lift the leg rest off, and that would bring you another inch closer to the bed. And that's great. I don't need to do that in this situation, so I just am going to leave it tucked behind. The next step is you're going to swing your armrest out of the way. All wheelchairs have a slightly different strategy for swinging armrests. Some armrests come off entirely with two pins. Some armrests, like this one, will just simply swing back and stay attached. So this one has a push button that involves that. You just press on it, it releases, swings it out of the way. Now, the goal is you are going to have your space between the wheel the cushion and the bed and this wheel is going to get in your way and that's why you need that 45 degree angle. So let's go ahead and move this one out of the way because this is the one we're going to use. I'm going to show the slide board and if you can see there's an angle to the slide board here. So this part is going to go up towards the underside of you and then it's going to have a handle which is what's going to be closest to your bottom. So the handle is meant to be held like this with your hand in it you're going to lean away from the slide board and away from the bed a little bit. And the goal being for you to be able to take this wedge piece and insert it under your hip and bottom area. So when you do that, you want to double check that the end of the slide board on the surface you're going to has enough covering a, a very solid piece of the bed. So in this situation, I have about three inches of the slide board over the edge of my bed, which is enough to make it stable. If it's hanging too close to the edge, you run the risk of it sliding off. That's when the longer slide board is necessary. So again, situation to situation, you may have to make some adjustments. But now I've got it set up here. My bottom is slightly under it. You can see I have an uphill transfer to complete here. I'm going to grab the edge of my slide board and I'm going to take my other hand and place it here. This again is assuming I have full upper body strength and am able to do this, but we're gonna do it for this situation. Double check that my brakes are locked. I'm going to take my feet down from this leg rest and I'm actually gonna flip it up out of the way so it's not interfering with the transfer or I don't run the risk of tipping the wheelchair forward. So now I'm going to complete the slide board transfer by slowly pushing myself up to the bed surface. Okay, then I simply lean away and pull the slide board out. And I haven't had to do any weight bearing through my legs. Um, the slide board was effective in, in allowing me to transfer up. Then I would complete my bed mobility, laying down, adjusting my legs, and so on. It's very important that when you attempt a slide board transfer, you get yourself positioned as high up in the bed as possible. Usually higher than you think, because if you end up too far down, now you need to scoot up the whole length of the bed to get into position. So again, that's a space set up. That's how you make sure you don't have an end table next to the bed perhaps. It has to be moved for this because you really want to be positioned as high up in bed as possible. Okay, so now we're going to take the same slide board and we're going to go back to our wheelchair. So if I'm positioned here, again, I'm going to try to turn a little bit so that I'm angled towards this wheelchair. And know that this is going to be an easier transfer because I'm going downhill now. Again, if your bed height is adjustable, an equal flat transfer is always going to be safer. But in this situation, it will work. So again, just like I did in the wheelchair, I'm going to lean away. I'm going to insert the slide board under my hip and bottom. I'm going to double check that the board is securely under on the seat. So it's got a lot of surface area here and that this part is securely under my bottom. And again, I'm going to push and push and push until I'm back onto my wheelchair seat and then I will remove the slide board. So that's how to do it if you are independent. If you are somebody who's going to be attempting to do slide board transfers without somebody assisting you, that's what it looks like. If you are going to be requiring the assistance of a caregiver, traditionally what you'd need to do is the caregiver is going to stand in front of you. The caregiver is going to help with the insertion of the uh, slide board underneath your bottom. So if there's somebody here, they're going to instruct you to lean, slide the slide board into position, and then they're going to assist you by grabbing using a gate belt or some other kind of 
appropriate attire here, and they're going to assist with that sliding motion up into bed. So it's a very useful transfer for folks if they're recovering from a lower body injury, or pelvic injury, or something that prevents them from bearing weight for a period of time, or somebody who just simply will not have the use of their lower body for the rest of their lives. Sideboard transfers are traditional in those situations as well. So I hope this was a little bit useful for you guys. If you got some value out of it, consider giving me a thumbs up. As always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down below. I'll leave links to the products I use today in my description down below. And as always, if you want more information on how to stay safe and independent in your own home or community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.